What's my take on vegan diets? Paul Saladino, he is, well, he's not actually carnivore anymore. I watched a recent What I Ate Today of his and it had a lot of fruit. It's kind of weird, you know, he's got like one of the carnivore books, Carnivore Code, I think it's called, but he's not actually carnivore, which is it's not surprising. It's a, such a hard diet to stick to. Like, even if you actually feel good on the diet, man, that's so restrictive. He still eats a whole lot of meat, to be clear, so... um yeah, let's see what his take on vegan diets is. I see supplement in the thing, supplements. So uh, yeah, he's probably gonna say you have to eat tons and tons of supplements to be healthy, something like that. Or vegans eat lots of supplements and still aren't healthy. <laughs> What's your opinions on vegan diets? Mm, bad idea. I'm putting you on the hot spot. Yeah, <laughs> we should just stop there. Bad idea. I know that guy. I remember reacting to a video he did uh, eating like a high protein vegan diet for a day that was that was pretty good i think i love that vegans are thinking intentionally about the food they eat wait the what okay the chewing like why 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 are we asking questions why are we talking <laughs> what we're eating where are your mothers the eating grass come on vegans. man never heard that one before i just think it's extremely hard potentially impossible to get everything you need to be an optimal human without eating animal foods there are so many nutrients in meat that are not found in plants. Can you name them please? What what nutrients are we talking about here? And we can take a million supplements. I know a lot of prominent vegans do. What prominent vegans take a million supplements? I know he's exaggerating, but like I take a multi, I take a probiotic, which is not a vegan thing, and I take DHA. And I mean, really DHA is not a vegan thing either because I hate fish and did not eat it when I wasn't vegan. So for health, I probably would have taken DHA then as well. Meat has 42,000 components. 42,000 components, yeah. Garlic, 4,000. What? Okay, let me phrase this nicely. What does that mean though? Like that's such a, that's such a goofy thing to just say. 42,000 components. Is one of those components saturated fat? Heme iron? Is that another component? Potentially a factor in uh, the link between red meat and colon cancer. I'm sure poison ivy has a lot of components, probably a lot of good components. There's a lot of mushrooms out there that will kill you if you eat them. So many components though. This is why studies are done, right? We don't just look at a food and go, well, it has this and this and this, so it's healthy, or it has this and this and this, so it's not healthy. Like we care, number one, we care about outcomes. We care about what outcomes are linked to foods. And again and again and again, we find that certain meats, particularly red meats, are linked to um, rather nefarious outcomes. And this is not vegan propaganda by any means. Uh, one of my favorite new sites I just discovered, I don't know how I've missed them, Sigma Nutrition. It is another non-sponsored nutrition focused website like examine.com is another one I really love. Nutrition Made Simple is a uh, YouTube channel. But yeah, Sigma Tr Nutrition has a really great detailed look at red meat specifically, not processed red meat, but unprocessed red meat and the link between that and cancer. And it's not as strong as the link between processed red meat and cancer, but it is there. Is that one of the 42,000 components? When we see correlations like that happen over and over and over, that's when we should ask ourselves, is it worth eating this food? Are there nutrients in red meat that we cannot get elsewhere? Are there not healthier alternatives? And it's clear there are healthier alternatives. You can get iron from plant foods and you get other things from plant foods like antioxidants and fiber that you don't get from meat. Like food is so much more complex than we believe. And I think it's a folly to believe that we can take the value of a strawberry and put it into a multivitamin. Who believes that though? No one believes that you can take a strawberry and put it, I mean, how much anti-multivitamin media attention is happening right now? I mean, there was just another study that found no correlation between taking a vitamin and outcomes. Again, what we care about. The only reason you would want to take a multivitamin is not to replace a strawberry, but to get uh, a nutrient or a couple nutrients in this case that you are sure or pretty sure you are not getting from your diet. So in my case, as a vegan, I'm not getting B12. That's not actually true. I consume silk soy milk, which does have B12 in it. It is fortified with B12. I do eat nutritional yeast as well, but I prefer to have another like dedicated source just in case I stop eating those and I forget, you know, I don't think about it. And then I don't know, a year or more goes by and I'm not getting any B12. Oh, that was kind of scary. So I like to take a multi for that. Also vitamin D. So those are two things that I am 
pretty sure I'm not getting enough of just from my diet or being outside. Everything else in there, I very, very likely get plenty from my diet, but you know, just in case, and the Deva Multi is so cheap. So I just personally choose to take a multi instead of just taking individual B12 and vitamin D. He's right. Don't try to replace strawberries with like vitamin C, right? It's just, that's not not going to do it. But also there are reasons to take supplements. And I would argue it is much healthier to get your B12 from a supplement than from red meat and more ethical, but I doubt he's going to talk about that, of course. It's so much more complicated. Does your multivitamin have creatine, carnitine, taurine, anserine? So I actually have a whole video looking at these nutrients that are missing from plants that you find in meat, like carnitine and taurine. And the truth is, number one, these are non-essential nutrients. These are not essential nutrients like vitamin C, which just means we have to get it from elsewhere. Our body does not produce it. We have to get it from food or vitamin D from the sun. Taurine, etc. we do not need to get from our diet. So that's number one. Number two, when we see these nutrients studied and we see potential benefits, right? Uh, athletic performance, cognitive benefits. The participants in these studies are not being fed meat. They are being fed supplements. They are being fed supplemental taurine, usually in very high amounts. Like you would have to eat in some cases, if I remember correctly, like a pound or more of meat to get that amount of taurine, carnitine, carnosine, whatever. So if we look at creatine specifically, most studies involved an initial week or so loading phase at 0.3 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. It then drops to at least 0.03 grams per kilogram. So for a 180 pound, 82 kilogram person, this translates to a loading dose of 25 grams per day and a maintenance dose of at least 2.5 grams per day. If you wanted to do this with meat and just for the maintenance phase, you would need to eat at least a pound and a half of beef a day just to get at least 2.5 grams of creatine. Herring has more, but you would still need more than half of a pound of herring a day. Athletes commonly take it as a powder or in capsules. Gee, I wonder why. You do not want to be consuming that much red meat. I'm focusing on red meat because that's usually the meat that these people focus on. They think red meat is the healthiest, right? That's the one that's full of iron and B12 and whatnot. So in that case, again, if you're looking to get the potential benefits from creatine, it makes a lot more sense from a health standpoint and probably a monetary standpoint as well to get it from a supplement than to get it from meat. I love the intention around a vegan diet. I just think it's a very good way for humans to get nutrient deficient. Yeah, and comments are gonna be crazy now. Bring them. Yeah, nothing brings people together like diet and politics. Which is always so funny to me, like with the carnivore people, like they seem to get just as upset about this as vegans. I mean, I guess it really is just an identity thing, right? It's something that people have latched onto. So they're going to be upset when someone criticizes it because it's who they are now, right? They are a carnivore. Um, but like for vegans, not that it's okay for people to get super upset when someone criticizes the way we eat and what we believe, but it is more than just what we eat, right? It is a, a, an ethical stance. It's upsetting to me when someone says, I don't care about animals or mm, bacon, not because of my identity, not because of my personal veganness, but because of the animals, right? Like joking about eating animals when you actually eat animals actually hurts animals and it's upsetting. But being upset when someone made fun of your choice to revere a single food group, it's just weird, man. Veganism primarily has to do with reducing suffering, not just eating strawberries. But anyway, I theorized in that other video I did uh, towards the end that Paul would be talking about creatine, possibly, you know, nutrients that are missing. And um, I was right. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen a lot of this stuff. You know, there's really nothing new at this point in terms of uh, anti-vegan rhetoric. Again, I'm coming from a place of reducing suffering. So I just want to know, are there alternatives? I don't really care if meat is healthy. I don't really care if fish is healthy. And by the evidence, some fish looks to be healthy. I hate to admit it, but that's, that's the rub. Heart disease risk has a lot to do with how much saturated fat you are consuming, how much unsaturated fat you are consuming, as well as your weight, fiber intake, exercise. You can certainly eat a good amount of animal products and still keep your saturated fat intake low. I would love to say, no, you can't. You have to be vegan. <laughs> this is not the way it is. Point is, my reason for not eating animal products has to do with animals. The environment as well, but predominantly the animals and reducing suffering. If we can eat a more compassionate, a much more compassionate diet and still be healthy, 
why wouldn't we do that? Why would we choose to continue to harm animals for creatine, for maybe some muscle and recovery gains, maybe some cognitive benefits? Oh, wait, that's not meat though. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, very silly video from a a uh, rather silly person. He seems like a nice guy, but um, no, nah, fuck it, man. That sunscreen video, what the fuck? And then I'm gonna add the zinc. Removed it from the heat, stir this for a couple minutes, let it cool. When it starts to get a little more mushy, use a hand mixture and whip air into it to give it more of a texture. Also, Red Pin Reviews, another non-sponsored site, they review nutrition books. One of, if not their worst reviewed book is wouldn't you know it? Carnivore Code by Dr. Paul Saladino. They always include this most unusual claim section of the review, which I love. They say the Carnivore Code is not a book that shies away from bold claims, which is a, a very nice way to put that. Carbohydrates that accompany plant fiber are also likely to cause spikes of insulin and other satiety impairing hormones like GLP-1, leading to augmentation of hunger cues rather than decreasing them, which is the opposite of how it works. In fact, semaglutide, the weight loss drug, is a modified version of GLP-1. Part of me feels really bad for people like this because... Like this is his legacy. People are gonna be able to search for his Wikipedia page for years to come. And the, like, this is this is what he's gonna be known for. Ah, oh, that's so sad. But hey, he's eating more fruit now. Like who knows, this could just be the start of something, you know, moving further and further away from uh, the meat. Who knows? How do you still sell that book though? Like he still sells that book. What does he have to say about that? How does he defend that? As someone who used to sell a very dumb diet book, when I no longer believed in that dumb diet book, I stopped selling it. Make that money, I guess. Anyway, thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Please do subscribe and like the video and support the channel if you want. And thank you so much to those of you who do support the channel, all of my members here on YouTube and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do post exclusive content for members. That is not something I ever thought I would do, but I started this a couple years ago now. I think I just started with a couple vlogs every month. And then last year, January of 2023, I made one of those a controversial topic. So this is just whatever I want to talk about that doesn't have to do with, you know, veganism, nutrition, sustainability, anything like that. And I'm so happy I did that because it's really nice that, you know, there's lots of, lots of things I like, like, Jesus, there's lots of things I like to talk about, but I don't necessarily want to put out there in public. There's lots of spicy hot takes on there and um, it's just really fun. It's really fun to hear from, I don't know, really nice smart people. I get a lot of good feedback. It's cool. So um, yeah, support me there if you want. And that's it for me. Thanks again, guys. New video soon.